I want to get back to something that we were talking about in terms of search and stuff. Uh, at the, the Next 10X conference, we were talking a bit about uh, RankBrain and how Google is using AI. What have you seen the big search engines doing with AI and machine learning um, as it impacts marketers? Well, uh, I'm glad you started with RankBrain because it's always worth starting there because there's a little bit of a myth out there and Google picked a really unfortunate name for it. Um, <laughs> But the original rank brain algorithm is what I call a sparse data algorithm. Mm -hmm. And it was really about providing better answers for um, really the kinds of search queries that users enter for which they don't have data. Okay. Uh, and so the way that worked is it would actually look at historical search queries, especially on long tail queries. It might be five, six, seven words long, right? Or even longer queries. And nobody had ever done these queries before but they could do what they call a similarity vector analysis, mm -hmm. where they look at the vector for the query entered by the user based on the words, but they might have a kind of similar query where the vector, when they draw it, is like really similar. So mathematically, they're able to determine that these queries are extremely similar. So this is building on what you said a moment ago, right? right. Just doing the statistical analysis. So looking at those two very similar queries, Google could then actually see how people responded to the other query. Did they not click on the first result? Did they go um, ignore the e-commerce results and mm -hmm. click on the informational result? And based on that, they can tune how they give you the results for the query you actually entered. And this is where RankBrain started okay. uh, years ago. Um, and the interesting thing is this got confounded a little bit more because Google made this statement that it was the number three ranking factor in the Google algorithm. By the way, the first two they said were content and links. Huge um, so, uh, which is good. You know, the world hasn't <laughs> been turned completely upside down yep. yet. But um, the, the reality is we got to remember 70% of all search is in the long tail. Right. So if RankBrain operates primarily in the long tail, it can actually have a very large impact, but not change ranking for higher, you know, higher volume queries at all, which is basically what they tend to say about it. Right, well, so, but here's the thing, the way we search is radically changing, so that inflates RankBrain's importance. So think about that. Today, when I talk to a Google Assistant, I don't say, you know, best SEO firm, right? I don't say, speak in these short clip phrases. I'll say, hey Google, what's the best SEO firm in Framingham, Massachusetts? Right? It's a very long tail query. So does that mean that RankBrain is processing a lot more of like the voice interface and the voice searches? I, I think that's likely the case. Okay. That, um, as, as you know, voice queries tend to be much more natural language and much longer. And, and as a result, um, yeah, it's going to trigger RankBrain even more. 